Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm Pastor, I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Mike here with me tonight, and um, we're going to start Psalms. So we're going to start Proverbs chapter 8, part 1. But before we start, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful time tonight, and we just pray that um, you just give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that your word talks about in this proverb. Uh, we just surrender this whole study to you and just bless our time together. Let us have a wonderful time in your word and just be in the midst of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Proverbs 8 verse 1 says, Does not wisdom cry out? and understanding lift up her voice. Amen. Comments? You know, Solomon is starting out saying it, talking about, you know, how wisdom cries out and, and we need to understand that, um, that we need wisdom, amen? And that's just what he shares with us. Um, wisdom is a very important part of our walk um, to understand who the Lord is and how to just um, live our day-to-day -day lives. You know, if we have wisdom, we'll be good, you know? And and, uh, and this proverb just talks about that. It talks about the um, the excellence of wisdom, amen? Amen. Amen. Any comments? And so wisdom is understanding, and I think that's the point it's making here, and understanding lift up her voice um, <clears throat> when wisdom cries out. That's, and so Amen. he's letting you know that that's going to bring understanding to those things that we need to know. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rufus. Any other comments? In Proverbs 1, verses 20 to 21, Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. Amen. Amen. I think that's the understanding that Pastor Rufus was just talking about. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Yes, uh, in that the basis where the, the, uh, the, the uh, I believe the, the rulers, I'm not. I don't have a better word for this, but the, those who are uh, who make decisions and they, they reside in the gate in the, in the city where people come in and out, and and if if they have questions, then they're there to uh, instill wisdom, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like Solomon when he was king. They all went to him for wisdom and to, uh, to give him the understanding of how to settle the disputes that were going on that were brought to him. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that's made him famous. You know, his wisdom and knowledge and understanding made him known throughout the world. That's right. That's right. They all knew that Solomon was wise. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse two. She takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the maps where the paths meet. Amen. Any comments? Yeah. Um, 
it, 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 here I believe it is saying that it presents himself in places where people are gonna be be there and beside the way, beside where people are frequently going and where the paths meet. And so so you're gonna have people going from different directions there. And so so wisdom takes a stand there where people can have access to it or uh, to her according to the way the scripture reads it to her. Uh, and you know also um, um, the term a, a fork in the road you go along a path Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there's a fork in the road, and that is where paths meet. That is where decisions need to be made. The proverbial fork in the road. <laughs> and wisdom <laughs> takes her stand on top of the hill where those paths meet, where that fork in the road is, so that she can dispense her wisdom to those traveling on which way to go. Right, that's what guidance, guidance is needed at the forks in the road, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? In First Corinthians, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Amen. To the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. 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 And then it goes on to say, and I love this part, uh, for you see your calling, brethren, and not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world, <laughs> count me in, to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of, of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, you, know, you know, I was just thinking about this today because uh, I happen to work in a place where what the world would consider some of the very smartest educated people around are there. And I was listening to them so eloquently say things and teach things and so forth. And, but I was really thinking about how, how shallow all of the, what they consider wisdom and knowledge today in this world, how it really doesn't carry any eternal weight. It's not going to do anyone any good. And, uh, you know, it's it's really just amazing how, and of course, as, as you just read, Pastor Nike, the world looks at what we are learning here from the creator of the universe as silliness and foolishness, but it's the real truth. And it's really incredible to be in an environment where uh, where the complete opposite is true. And just witnessing it all is pretty incredible. Amen. 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 We had a Bible study yesterday um, in Ecclesiastes. It says, for much study right, is wearisome. 
to the flesh. flesh yeah. But let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. But this is man's all. Amen. Uh, yes. Amen. Yes. And according to that passage, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in First Corinthians, uh, it is Christ crucified that they consider foolishness. Mm -hmm. A crucified Savior is foolishness to the so-called wise uh, men, the, 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 the Gentiles, the philosophers. Uh, how can you have a crucified Savior? <laughs> what kind of Savior is that? That's their view of Christ crucified, and that's why it was foolishness to them. Amen. 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 Any other comments? In Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 14. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. 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 You can wait till tomorrow, huh, Pastor Knight? <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. All right. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation. Confirmation. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? God is good. God is good. Amen. 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 Okay, verse three and four. <laughs> you hard, you couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> when there are two witnesses, the thing will be established. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Okay, verse three and four. He cries out by the gate at the entrance of the city. At the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. Amen. To you, O oh men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Amen. Amen. Comments? I have it right. I believe at the gates, at the gates of the city, the, the entrance is where uh, judgment happened, where we, the, the elders would meet, where uh, people would bring their case and so forth. It all had something to do with the gates uh, in each city. Didn't Mordecai, um, <laughs> wasn't Mordecai uh, a um, I don't want to know. I don't know if the term is gatekeeper. But didn't he sit at the entrance? Yes, you are right. He wasn't a gatekeeper, but he was there. And yeah, that that's where like that was the hot spot, you know, because people mm -hmm. come and go there, and that's where discussions happened and and so forth. Uh, and so yeah, you see that reference quite often in scripture in the Old Testament. Amen. 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 Very important place. Mm -hmm. At the gate. Any other comments? Mm 
Luke 14, verses 21 to 24. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you, that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Amen. 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 Any comments? You know, Jesus was talking about, I mean, this is about coming in. And now the, the master of the house invited many people to come to the supper. And they all rejected him. And so he went out to the gates and the byways and the places to invite those to come in. And it was not a good thing for them. They all made excuses not to come in and why they couldn't come. And, you know, we, you know, we can look at this on a spiritual level that when Jesus calls us, we should not be making excuses not to come in and not to do exactly what he wants. You know, what he wants us to do is for our own good, and and um, there's blessings and benefits to just obeying him. And um, praise the Lord. You know, we are all chosen. We are the foolish, as Pastor Knight said. We are the foolish of this world, and, and that's who he chooses. Many times, over and over again, it's the foolish of the world that God uses. Or unpopular. Or unpopular. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so when you get invited to dinner, go. You know? <laughs> 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 uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, any other comments? <laughs> Verse five, O oh, you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be, an under, be of an understanding heart. Amen. Amen. Any comments? In the book of Proverbs, it mentions prudence. Yes. Throughout the, the book. Go ahead, Sister Joanna. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting because I have this um, version of it says, oh, simple ones learn to be shrewd. How is shrewd prudence? Because that when I when I read this, learn to be shrewd, it reminded me of the verse, the harm wisest serpents and harmless as doves. Um, so prudence. What is the definition both, both of prudence? Both pertain to the in intellect. Prudence is... is prudence is... Um, I looked it up today and it says it's crafty. Oh, okay. So it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So it does go along the lines Which, of the, the verse. The yes. wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was curious about that too, uh, Sister Joanna, just prudence. But, um, when we see a crafty person or someone that's plotting and things like that, we should understand and, and look for the God for things that's happening. I guess to be on guard. Mm -hmm. Shrewd well, people. We know there's a lot of shrewd people, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm going to look at um, oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to look that up because prudence, prudence is wisdom. like thinking about what you say, how it's going to affect people. Um, the prudent are those who don't just speak quickly 
and just say what's the first thing on their mind. They're, they're much more thoughtful. So let me let me look it up and see what I get. Amen. Yeah, okay, so Sister P looked over here. Prudence, the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. That's what she's got here. Okay. We need to exercise prudence in such important Cautious. matters. Cautiousness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's also a verse that says, be wise as serpents, but harmless it as doves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for sure. In Hebrew. Um, yeah. So in, in Hebrew, it's orma. The definition is craftiness, prudence. I mean, yeah. serpent was crafty. Right? Yeah. With E. Yeah, that's where I got it from. Craftiness. Mm -hmm. Expression. Any other comments? Uh, discretion, that's a good word. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be a good. Amen. Psalm 19, verses 7 to 8. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Amen. Amen. Prudence, huh? Amen. Any comments? So all of these uh, principles involve the word, the word of God in, in various ways. And so it's a word that is so enlightening and, and 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 it works upon the heart it rejoices the heart um, and so so does the commandments because of because of the what the commandment is the guidance that is being given is is, is one is so good so great it's it's from God it's it's God fed and or God given, I should say. And so therefore it's for our own good. All these statutes, commandments, and and what have you. Amen. Amen. No, we could say that this is all about the word, you know. The word does all these things. You know, it rejoices our hearts. It enlightens our eyes. We know that the word of God is pure and the statutes and the ordinance and commandments are right. We know that this is the word it's talking about. And, right. and this is what we need in our hearts. You know, we know the Bible always tells us to write these things in the tablets of our hearts and, you know, remember them. And, and because that's what helps us is the word. Helps us get through all the things that we go through in our lives. It's, it's the word. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Okay, verse six and seven. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. 
Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Amen. Amen. Any comments? I guess our Solomon is about to tell us some serious wisdom now. <laughs> In Proverbs 2, verses 6 to 7. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. Amen. Amen. Sound wisdom. Praise the Lord. He gives these things. And how does he give them? Because we ask. That's all that's required. If we need wisdom, we ask. If we need knowledge and understanding, we ask. And the Lord will give it to us. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Verse 8, all the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. Amen. Okay. Can we joke around? Well, that's a perfect person. <laughs> 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 So really, you know, when when it says all the words of my mouth are with righteousness, that's really speaking of God. Yes, it is. God, God is the only one whose every word is righteous. Amen. Where there is nothing crooked or perverse. Um, um, so God is wisdom. God is understanding. And, and, um, you know, we have these other um, ways of describing, you know, but like we, we learn God has many facets and, um, you know, um, I, I always bring come back to this thing, the, the depiction of God in shack, the, the some of the feminine attributes of God, some of the, you know, God has so many facets. It's it's hard to comprehend all that that He is, and um, really, to me, all this is just speaking of how God's words are righteous, and there is nothing in God that is perverse or crooked. Amen. Amen. Well, there, there is another little, little tiny twist here. It says, mm -hmm. all the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so it, it's godly. It's, it's with, is as, as of God. But it doesn't say it is mm -hmm. righteous. Mm -hmm. It's with righteousness. It's with those things in him that are of God, him or her. And nothing crooked or perverse is in them. So that kind of explains or justify the goodness of these words. However, it could be at least room, room for it being someone other than God himself. Mm -hmm. Correct? Would you agree on that? <laughs> I was just going to say, we know that Solomon asked for wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. So for me, therefore, the things that he was saying were really from God because he was God was giving him the words to speak. And, you know, when he was praying and asking God for wisdom, he was saying, so I can judge your people rightly. 
and I can be a good king. And so I can, you know, I'm asking for wisdom so I can do all these things in your name, you know, to please God. He was, you know, asking for that. And so he was, I think the words that he was saying were actually from God, like Sister Joanna was saying. He was, you know, he was giving him the words to speak them and they, he was speaking them. And we know that he was doing really well as long as he kept following God and, and doing all the things that God wanted him to do. And, but then, you know, when he stopped doing that, that he got into trouble after that. And so I think, you know, going back to this, I think these words he was speaking were the words of God that God was putting in his heart to talk and say, and, and to be a good king during that time doing the first part or the whatever part it is that, that he was doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Okay. Uh yeah, I I don't I don't disagree with that. Uh he says the words of his mouth are with righteousness and and we know that that is God. God is righteous as Joanna said. God is the is fully righteous, completely and fully and his words are with righteousness. Amen. Because, because they came from God. Amen. Okay. Well, I think we do that all the time. When we give a study or we do um, a preaching or whatever we're doing for God, we always ask God to give us the words that he wants us to share. Now, we might say it according to our own personalities and character that we say it from, but I think the the most I mean the most of the part of the word, you know, is God speaking through us, so we can speak to us. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I think uh, things will get probably a, a little more clear as we get farther along in this particular chapter. Uh, I think it's going to open itself up to help us really better understand what's happening in this chapter and who's speaking and so forth. But yeah, all scripture is inspired by God, spiritual. So if it's in the Bible, definitely God's in on it. Praise Amen. 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 Any other comments? Philippians 2, verses 14 to 16. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Help us, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Amen. 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 Any comments? For those who are working or not, I mean... <laughs> It's easy to complain. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> but it, it's amazing here that you may be blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Yeah. Um, it also says you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Amen. You don't put a lampstand underneath the bed, but on top, right? That's right. Um, Amen. For all to see. Amen. And we know we do walk in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Our world now is just crooked and perverse, you know. But 
that doesn't mean that we should not shine our lights in the world. As Pastor Mike is saying, we need to still let our light shine and, and uh, let the world see. You know, we don't go and hide because things are not right in our world. We still stand boldly for God. Amen. Any other comments? In verse 16 of that verse. Mm -hmm. Hold and pass the word of life. That's tonight. Yes, verse 16. That's verse 16. Holding past the word of life. Yeah. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I've not run in vain and labored in vain. Amen. Amen. Now the comments. Okay, verses 9 through 11. It says, They are plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction, do not silver, and acknowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things one may desire cannot be compared to her. Amen. Amen. Comments. The longer we walk with God, the more e easier it is for us to understand this. Uh, in our lives before, we've held so much value in money and material things and thought it was going to be our ticket to peace and safety. But the more we get to know God, the more easier, the easier it is to see that those things have no lasting value. Amen. Amen. Hmm. You know, and the things that we once wanted, we realize there's no satisfaction in those things now. No comfort and no peace and nothing. And only God can give us those things. Nothing can compare to her. Bless you. Bless you. And then in um, 1 Timothy 6, verses 7 to 8, it says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen. When we pass away or when we die, we can't carry all these material <laughs> possessions with us. And having food and clothing... With these, we shall be content. Amen. 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 Well, we know the people that are here are not going to let us carry those things anyway. <laughs> we can forget it. <laughs> Comments? Well, yes, there's usually no trailer hitches behind them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, you all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. I failed to see one yet, you know. Well, I think those pharaohs in Egypt really thought they're going to bring something with them, but uh, now the museum's got everything. Yeah, well, who's to say people didn't know go rob those graves either, you know? <laughs> well, they definitely did. Yeah. <laughs> They definitely did. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Any other comments? <laughs> In Proverbs 3, verses 13 to 18. Happy is the man who finds wisdom, 
and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's nothing better than wisdom. Amen. Any comments? So we should hold on to wisdom. Amen. <laughs> That's what we need to hold on to. We hold on to our Lord and Jesus, but wisdom is one of those things as well. I wanted to bring up um, Solomon because he, God was asking Solomon what do you want? I'll mm -hmm. give you anything you want. And he he had asked for wisdom. And mm -hmm. He pleased God. And yet he was given wisdom, but he still like went astray. Like his, you know, everyone knows what he did. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> well documented. <laughs> um, all his wives, they worshiped small G gods. and That's right. And it turned... His heart away from God. Amen. And God yeah, wanted. I'll oh, go ahead, Pastor C. So, Pastor Knight, then knowing that, uh, and I'm glad you brought it up. What would you say is even like what was what could have Solomon had that would have made him even more complete and not. Because he even through all of that, and he never lost his wisdom, right? But something was mm -hmm. missing. What was it miss? What was he missing? Well, I won't put you on the spot. He was missing love. If he loved God, not the worldly eros kind of love that he probably had for all the women, but true loving God, he would have never gone astray. Love is the answer, and love God is love, and so with love, you get it all. Praise the Lord. Like his father, David, he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. He loved God, even with his shortcomings yeah. and mistakes. Um, he Bingo. had a heart for God. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's a very good example. That would be agape love. The love that comes from God. Amen. The unconditional love that comes from God. But just like wisdom, we got to ask. Otherwise, we won't make it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Without him, we'd all go astray. We'd be just like the disciples and abandon him. All of that. We just need to ask him to give us his love and keep us near him that's the only way Amen. yeah you know it, it's so simple ask and you will receive seek and you shall find knock and the door will be open and um it's so straightforward what god tells us and we need to ask yeah, yeah. i mean there's no excuse if you don't ask you don't receive you don't seek, you don't find. If you don't knock, the door won't open. That's just, it's very simple. It's easy. True. You okay? So let's ask. Mm -hmm. Amen. Although the beauty of it all, even though the disciples 
all forsook him. You know, they all went astray um, when Jesus was going to the cross, and yet he came to them. He didn't condemn them no. <laughs> for just failing, like even falling asleep at the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and even Peter denied him three times, right. but Jesus was not angry at him. He actually came to Peter and even asked Peter three times the very words, do you love me? Amen. Do you love me? And he said, you know that I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Okay, verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. There's that word discretion. Yeah. <laughs> Wisdom and prudence, knowledge and progression. Yeah. In comments, I think that's a good example of why I just don't feel comfortable with that craftiness thing because. That, that doesn't fit with these are all good things prudence yeah. and expressions yeah. it's wisdom and and thinking of you know really yeah very good yeah. but what about the verse that says be wise as serpents i mean that's not a good <laughs> <laughs> like why would you compare that with serpent yeah because serpents are crafty right? and they're not wise yes and then harmless as doves having that Form of wisdom. So right, the wise as serpents is is understanding the enemy and how the enemy yeah. works, mm -hmm. but not not acting on that. But yeah, yeah, yes. right. Amen. Amen. Being harmless as doves. Harmless as doves. <clears throat> well, he's asking you to have both. If you combine those two, the harmlessness will will nullify some of the, the things you'd get from the the, the uh, serpent. Because the serpent is not harm, harmless. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe it's about balance. Um, balancing. It's about having both those qualities. Right. Yeah. Yes. Those those two qualities work will, will work for you. Both have, having both will work. So maybe if there's a balance between craftiness and harmlessness, that balance is prudence. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes. Very well put to do it. Discretion. <laughs> Yeah. So it's as almost if you need both to walk with the Lord, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, you can be harmless, but if you're not wise, you can still go astray. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can still be deceived. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Any other comments? So the context of that verse comes from Matthew 10. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Amen. Amen. Um, it's like the other verse that 
that says, do not cast your pearls before That's swine, right. lest they mm -hmm. turn around, trample you up. And That's right. Are, Amen. Yeah, somewhere along those lines. But being wise enough to share what God wants us to share. Because we can be sharing what what is important to the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a, a story in the new in the Old Testament about one of the kings who invited someone in and just gave him access to Oh yeah, yeah. Everything. To everything. I forgot what story that was. One of those kings. Hezekiah. 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 Yeah, he asked God to keep him alive longer. God gave him another 15 years, and what did he do? He exposed everything to the enemy, and the enemy came and took it all. He wasn't prudent. <laughs> um, okay. He just wanted long, longer long, life. Longer life. <laughs> yeah, but those deers weren't good for him, though. No. Yeah. They were hard times, right? Yeah, God. Well, actually, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You can go ahead, Pastor Knight. Uh, I was just going to say, God answered his prayer. Yeah. He actually gave him more years, yeah. but like you said, they weren't good years because the enemy came in. All right, go ahead. I took his stuff. Well, if I remember it correctly, God said, well, all that's going to be taken away. But you you're gonna you're 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 gonna not suffer, but your next generation of war will. And he said something, oh that sounds good to me. <laughs> <Something like that. laughs> wow. Selfish. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> he, he asked one more time. <laughs> they weren't gonna be good. <laughs> Again, it's like so. Did the enemy not come and take his stuff while he was alive? He did it for the next generation that they came in. I think so. I'm looking at for it here. Oh, okay. Well, he was king, Sister Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a king to me. <laughs> Not a good king, but a king. Okay, so uh, in Second Kings twenty, uh, so so Hezekiah asked for more life, and God gave it to him fifteen more years. Then in verse twelve, the Babylonians came, and Hezekiah was attentive to them and showed them all the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointments and all his armory, and all that was found among his treasures, like we have spiritual treasures. Uh, there was nothing in his house or all that his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, what did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, they came from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, what have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered and said, they have seen all that is in my house, there is nothing among my treasures I have not shown them. And I, Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and shall they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord, which you have spoken is good. For he said, will there not be peace and truth, at least in my days? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> God surely uses a lot of imperfect people. Yes, he does. So did it go on to say that it wasn't going to harm him? It was going to be his next generation? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, 
It, yeah, it doesn't say he had any hard times. He rested with his fathers, and Manasseh took his son reigned in his place. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was God was already saying it's going to happen to your descendants, and sure enough, it did. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, with Hezekiah's mistake there, that doesn't really define him. He was one of the greatest kings of the kings of Israel. But this is what happened. He asked for those extra 15 years, and all it did was create problems. If he'd just mm -hmm. gone with God's will, he'd already be in paradise and save a lot of hassle. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, he for a while, he he was, he was looked real good because of his, his dad, Ahaz. He was a bad king. He, he worshipped. Um, the idols, and he ended temple worship, and 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 um, and Hezekiah came along, and he he fixed things. He he restored the temple worship, and and so go down the idols too, right? He, he was considered a good king, in briefly, in you know, for for a short <laughs> time. Well, we know. But good kings can fall. Look at David. <laughs> you know, God, God has these people, um, the stories of these people in scripture so that we can learn. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. we, we learn from David's sin, his mistakes. We learn here from Hezekiah that... Um, you know, oh, oh, he was a good man that did good things and and loved God. He still had a lack of um, discretion when it came to showing everything to Babylonian um, <clears throat> nobles that came. So praise the Lord that God gives us these things so we can learn. Yeah, so, so we have the wisdom not to do it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that we can learn. Yeah. Any other comments? In Romans 11, verses 33 to 36. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. 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 Comments. Okay. I guess we will stop here and continue with Proverbs 8, part 2 next week. Um, yeah, next week. Okay. Any parting comments from anyone? Just thank you so much for this um, Friday Bible study. It's it's good. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Sister Joanne. Thank you all. Such a fun time, I have to say. It is. It's lots of fun. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise Amen. the Lord. Wonderful closing verse there, that last verse. <laughs> Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful time tonight and for bringing us all here together tonight, Lord, and just giving us a wonderful, blessed time in the Word. And thank you for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding you've uh, you taught us all tonight, and we just will write these on the tablets of our hearts, and we just um, ask you to just continue the work you're doing in everyone here, those that are here and those that will listen to this in the future, and and we just um, just thank you 
Lord, I pray for everyone to have a wonderful night's sleep tonight and just for give us all a blessed day tomorrow. And I can I can hardly wait for the to, for the Sabbath message tomorrow. And um, we just give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God Thanks bless. Lord. God, God bless. bless everyone and happy Sabbath. God bless, God bless. and happy Sabbath. Yes. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you.